Number one is prototyping. I'm an engineer, so I have a tendency to way over design and think things. By having a 3D printer, I'm able to actually make a scaled model of things I actually want to build. Then once printed, you might find out issues you can run into with the actual project. Just for example, I was doing my infinity coffee table. Yes, I know, it's an engineering disaster as far as a waste of material for strength ratio, but design aspect is a really cool design. Once printed, you should know right off the bat this is not going to be a stable structure. You got all these overhung loads, and once built, it was totally confirmed. Now this is just a coffee table. Sky's the limit for what you can imagine and go back and forth with while prototyping. I mean, and hey, if I had not printed out my little shop stools, I wouldn't have known whether to go with red or black. Obviously went with black. So yes, honey, it was a necessary investment. Number two reason why every DIYer should have a 3D printer is all the tools you can make and create. I don't want to get into a comparison, but yes, this framing square and these other squares are actually more accurate than the square I got from Timu and Amazon. And I know that because I'm comparing it to my Tate tools and my Kinex Machina squares that actually are almost dead on accurate. One of my favorite and most used uh, tools, or maybe it's an accessory, are the paint cones. These suckers only take about five minutes to print and use up only, I think, like two grams of filament. So I think it equals out to be like five cents to print each one. I've also printed sanding blocks, bit organizers, rulers, wrenchers. Uh, okay, that actually worked just for the kids, but drill bit aligning tools and many other tools that I actually use and you might be surprised, but are pretty functional. Now on to the elephant in the room, the Anchormake M5C. They did send it to me, but all they did was say use it and just tell us what you like or dislike about it. So when I got it, you know, I, I fully expected just to do the little toys for the kids, you know, some fidget spinners and, and have at it. And well, it's been running nonstop. And as you can see, I've been doing prototyping tools and Worst of all, I've got so many side hustle ideas in my head that I was not planning on. Don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna quit welding and my shop stuff, but I think there is a permanent home for the 3D printer in my garage now. Or next to my bed, which my wife doesn't like too much when we're trying to sleep. There have been a couple, you know, parts that have lifted up off the bed, which is very typical for any 3D printer. Um, nothing you can't just work with or adjust the settings. But it is an entry level type machine, you know, at 399 bucks, you actually get quite a bit for it. And the features are far exceed what I would have expected, mostly because the last time I spent 300 bucks on a 3D printer was a couple years ago. and. It had nowhere near the features that this guy does. The setup only took 15 minutes and that was from totally unboxing to my first print. Which at 500 millimeters per second only took about 16 minutes for this Benchy build. Actually getting the models to the printer is even easier. You can download the app or the actual program, the slicer. And with that, it can be as simple as just using one of the preloaded models or go online and download whatever your imagination can dream of. You drag and drop. The Anchor Make Slicer has a lot of features, but if you just are starting out, put it on easy mode. Click slice. Then this page will tell you how long it will take to print and how much filament it will use. You click print and watch the fun begin. Also has a precision mode. Combine that with their 0.2 millimeter nozzle and you can get an RA3 surface finish. Just check out that fine detail. It's been awesome. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.